A millennial looking for a job got a verbal smackdown from a Cleveland woman who runs an online job bank. 26-year-old Diana Mikota is planning to move to Cleveland. So back in uh, February, she, this month, she sent a LinkedIn request and email detailing her education, professional, and volunteer activities to this woman, Kelly Blazik. She asked to join the online jobs list, but this is why this story is everywhere, um, because this is the response from this woman. Quote, your invite to connect is inappropriate, beneficial only to you and tacky. Wow, I cannot wait to let every 26-year-old job seeker mine my top-tier marketing connections to help them land a job. I love the sense of entitlement in your generation. You're welcome for your humility lesson for the year. Don't ever reach out to senior practitioners again and assume their carefully curated list of connections is available to you just because you want to build your network. She wrapped with this, don't ever write me again. Um, yowza. So Blazik sent an email response to CNN saying she has apologized to everyone involved, but let me bring in uh, Marion Salzman. She's an expert on marketing millennials. And Marion, welcome. Nice to have you on. Hi. Here, here's the thing. I, I know that millennials get a bad, bad rap, the whole in, entitled thing. But, but what I saw here was a young professional with, with enough courage to reach out to someone very senior. Is the bad rap really warranted? No, I, I actually don't think so. I mean, I was going back and looking at our own records, and I think I've hired four or five people that actually approached me via Twitter or even via Facebook, friend of a friend of a friend. And a lot of it comes down to tone. I don't think the tone um, of the millennials' approach was particularly off-putting even. So probably she'd written to me. I probably would have started a one-on-one -on -one chat. Uh, three weekends ago, someone from Auburn University wrote me a really cute email. She said, I'm doing a paper. I'd really like to talk to a working professional. I agreed to do a, a FaceTime with her. So I actually think it's a brave new world. We've got to welcome them in. I'm not sure rejecting them that way makes mm -hmm. sense. However, mm -hmm. However, once the rejection got posted, it makes me very nervous. How do you mean? Um, I'm a lot more nervous about that particular millennial once I found out what she did to that poor, let's assume she's a boomer, who wrote that pretty snarky rejection note. Mm -hmm. um, probably the right psyche would have been just let it go. She's not for me. Forget about her. She's a bad person, but let's ignore her. Mm -hmm. Not let's share that with the whole world and turn it into a cause celeb. Right, 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 right. And it's funny because as we're, I, I, literally, I got an email within the last hour. People reach out to me all the time. Young, you know, journalism students in college. I love it. I get to maybe one out of every three each and every time they email me, but I appreciate I appreciate the courage, um, but, but I, I do realize, and you work with millennials and you work with you know, helping hire millennials, what, um, what have you found, just pros, cons? They are the greatest generation in terms of great ideas, great aptitudes, they're always on, they're always connected, they're completely of the news and of the world. Their parents and their grandparents have told them how fabulous they are their whole lives. <laughs> so you can't really coach them to think very much that's very different. It's very tough. It's very hard to say no to them because they don't actually hear no. They hear no as maybe or maybe you made a mistake. Interesting. So w how many times do you have to say no before they get it and move on? You know, I find that you actually can't say no. You have to give them another way of doing something a different way to figure out how they zig and zag. I see.